Today we're gonna go over how to adjust the travel on your Fox 38. Four. Thanks for joining me guys. It's an honor and a privilege to be here. This is gonna be a pretty quick operation, but there's a few special things you need. This video is sponsored by my friends over at Jensen USA. Jensen's a leading online retailer of mountain bikes, parts, accessories, and everything you need to get back on the trails this summer. I have links to all the stuff we use in this video down in the description below. They all take you over to Jensen's website. Anything you purchase while you're there will help me keep making videos like this for you. So thanks in advance. I am happily supported by the guys at PNW Components, Industry 9, and Shimano. Before I start tearing this thing apart, I wanna ask all of you, why are you here? What fork did you get? What bike did you get? Why are you shortening or lengthening your fork? In my case, I got this Fox 38 from Fox directly. They were kind enough to sponsor me with this fork. Thanks, Fox. This fork showed up for my Niner WFO E9, which is an e-bike that I was doing videos with for Jensen USA. That was a really fun bike. Thanks to Niner for loaning me that. Fox was stoked on the videos and they, loaned, they gave me this and it's set up at 180 travel. Now, since I had to return that WFO E9 e-bike back to Niner, and I'm currently without an e-bike entirely, oh my goodness, I'm actually gonna shorten the travel of this 38 down to 160 so I can put it on the front of my Ibis Ritmo V2. Now, if you Googled how to adjust a Fox 38 for travel, you probably saw my video on how to adjust a Fox 36 travel. Well, good news is you're getting my videos in your search feed, that's great. Bad news is the air shaft you need for the 36 is very different than the one you need for the 38. The 38 is a bit more complex, a bit bigger, and it costs about twice what the 36 one costs. These guys are about, oh, 45, 50 bucks. You need to get a new one for each travel size. These are about, oh, 85, $90, so about twice the cost, and you need a special one for each travel size. So there is that big difference. The parts are different and the way you install it, it's similar, but there's a few differences. Beyond the new air spring assembly, you're gonna need a 32 millimeter chamferless socket, or if you're a grubby XBMX kid that grew up in the 90s riding bikes with threaded headsets, you might have a wrench like this hanging around, which has a 32 mil side and a 15 mil side. This wrench can do quite a bit when it comes to fork maintenance. As you all let me know in the comments down below, I made a mistake in the original video, so I'm reposting this now. You're gonna to need to use two different types of oil for this rebuild. You're gonna to need to use Fox 20 weight gold oil in several places, and you're gonna to need to use the five weight Teflon infused oil for the grip damper. We're also gonna need uh, like a, maybe a 10 mil, 12 mil, 15 mil socket, a few things like that. So this is a real low cost, real simple bike stand that Jensen has available from their house brand, Foundation. It works great to hold a fork when you're doing a fork travel adjust. The foundation stuff is way cheaper than the pro level stuff, but it's not quite as solid. So if you're only using it occasionally, it's fine. If you're setting up a home bike shop to work on everyone's bikes as a profession, you might wanna spend more. So the first thing we're gonna do is let all the air out of the fork. And I just like to use the ball end of an Allen wrench to depress the Schrader valve up top. Make sure to do this twice because there's always a little bit of extra air left after the first initial release. So I'm gonna remove the black cap that goes over the rebound adjusters. And then that is a two millimeter hex to remove those caps. So I'm gonna use a 15 mil socket, crack this guy loose. Okay. We're gonna to need to push the end of the damper right here into the lowers a little bit. This is tricky, because if you hammer on this thing right here, this is the adjuster knob, it's gonna blow your damper up. So you have this nut. Oh, let's take this crush washer off. Fox recommends you use a new crush washer, which fits right over that guy, every time you do this. But honestly, don't tell anyone. I've never had a problem with recycling old crush washers. You didn't hear that from me. So I'm actually gonna have to thread this foot nut back on just a little bit. Remember, I did save that crush washer so it won't get hurt with this. Then I've got a 15 mil socket and then I'm gonna use this. Cool. Awesome. That way I do not break my damper. This socket has enough space that the foot nut, when it's threaded down a little bit, that everything clears the end of the rebound adjuster and this just dislodged the damper adjuster from the lowers. And we're gonna do a similar operation on the air shaft side. I got a 10 mil open end here. I'm gonna crack that guy, it wasn't super tight. And similar deal, I'm gonna rescue the crush washer. This one might be jammed in there pretty good. 
We're not gonna rescue our crush washer, but we're gonna have a few threads in there. Yes, Fox sells a damper and air shaft removal tool. It's 50 bucks for each one. You'll need a different one for either side. I happen to have a few sockets in my collection, so I'm gonna use a 10 mil socket over that foot nut. Give it a tap -a -roo. I do have a real hammer on order. All right, unthread this foot nut. Came right off and I got my crush washer. It is good to go. So I've got my oil drain container and now I've got to drain the oil out of the fork lowers. It's not a ton of fluid. I don't know if it's 50 milliliters or what, but it's enough that you want to be careful with it. We'll make a bit of a mess. I just missed a ton of stuff coming out. I'm gonna take a bit of massaging to get all the fluid out. I just pulled straight down on the lowers, pull them off, and that is that. So this is our damper. We're gonna leave that roughly topped out. Okay, carefully set our fork lowers aside. We can use our swanky chamferless fox tool and a ratchet, which may or may not have come from Harbor Freight. Oh, it worked. Oh, three volume reducers. Oh, I do like to send. Now comes the hard part of removing the circlip that holds the whole spring assembly in place. Turn the fork back up and get it out. So if you're a professional, you're gonna use a pick. If you're an amateur like myself, you're gonna use a screwdriver. Lift under, and there we go, it comes right out. There we go. You gotta just yank this out of here. Awesome. Well, vice grips on the old foot nut definitely did the trick. Before inserting the new air spring into the fork, I'm gonna put some slick honey onto it. Now this is just the brand name for slick oleum. Slick oleum is a lubricant you use for a lot of the suspension type stuff. Slick honey is what's been marketed to us mountain bikers for the last, oh, two decades. There's already quite a bit inside. You guys probably can't see inside. And we're gonna put a little bit on the O-rings on the outside, not a ton. And then we'll put a little bit on the O-ring down at the bottom. Now we're gonna stick our new air shaft right on in. Oh. Careful, you might get your finger a little bit there. And then the new fork came with a new circlip, snap washer, spring washer. I don't know what you call it. I just know it goes right in there. It also came with a new foot nut and crush washer, which we will remove before we forget and find ourselves within a pickle. Oh, nice, that went right in there. Put a tiny little bit of slick honey on the bushings and seals. It's just a tiny little bit right in there. Okay. I'll wiggle this on carefully. I like to use a syringe to get the oil right into the holes. Just the right amount, not make a big mess. So over here on the spring side, we're gonna add three cc's of that Fox Gold weight right into the the spring side, the air chamber. That three cc's is gonna drop down into the assembly we just installed and it's gonna lubricate everything. I'm gonna go ahead and remove one of these volume reducers because I'm going from 180 down to 160. I'm gonna run, I'm not gonna run as much sag. I probably will be fine with two, but I can always add a third really easily. Okay, so we'll reinstall top cap. Torque spec for this is 220 inch pounds, which I Googled and sure enough, that's like in a more normal term, like 20 some odd foot pounds, 24 or something. So that's pretty tight. I'm gonna get it probably not quite all the way up to spec, but it's not gonna be loose either. Okay, that's tight. And then I'm not actually gonna throw my full riding pressure in the fork quite yet. I might put like 50 PSI in here, just something to hold the fork in position while I'm sliding everything together. Now we're gonna add the oil to the lowers, which you can do upside down pretty easy. 
on the air side bath, so in the bottom portion of the air side, you're going to put 20 cc's of the 20 weight gold fluid. And then on the damper side bath underneath the grip two damper, you're going to put 40 cc's of that five weight Teflon infused Fox fluid. Okay, there we go. And guide this through. Oh, and they both pop right on through. And because we got our air spring from Jensen USA, it came with a fresh crush washer for the air spring side and a fresh foot nut, even better. The part you didn't hear from me, we're gonna reuse the crush washer within the foot nut of the damper side. I just slid it right in there, tighten that guy down. This is the part where Jeff goes and double checks on the torque specs and reports back to all you. Torque specs are very low. We've got about seven foot pounds and four foot pounds. Fox reports it in inch pounds, which tells you just how low it is. So seven foot pounds, it's pretty light. Be very gentle with this huge ratchet. Four, that's nothing. That's probably four. All right, then I'm gonna clean this oily, disgusting fork off with some isopropyl alcohol. So there's a reason why I want this fork to be clean, and that's because my brake pads don't get along as well with fork oil as the innards of my fork do. Yep, that's right, that contaminates your brake, so you wanna be pretty tidy about this. You'll notice I removed the brake entirely rather than trying to do this with the brake attached. So we don't wanna to forget to put our rebound adjust back on. High speed first, then this little funky looking washer, the spring loaded one. And then you gotta find the flat part and line up the two mil with the flat part. In my case is right here. Your little black cap. All right, Ibis Ripmo, here I come. If you guys found this video helpful, please help me out. Hit that red subscribe button. Don't forget to thank the friendly folks at Jensen USA. If you need parts for your Fox Fork rebuild or you want to pick up a Fox Fork, I've got links to all that down below in the description. Anything you purchase from those links directly helps these videos come back at you quickly. Regardless of your project, enjoy your bike and have a great day. Peace.